Meanwhile. The attack on the U.S. Embassy was sparked by the latest U.S. strikes against Hezbollah brigades, which is part of the Popular Mobilization Forces. The majority of the crowd consisted of its members and supporters. The outer gates of the embassy burned and vandalized, bear witness to the Iraqi government's inability to protect the U.S. presence here. The terrifying scale of Australia's bushfire disaster is beginning to emerge. Well, the FDA has issued a ban on most flavored e-cigarettes, including fruit, candy, mint, and dessert flavors that are popular among teenagers. Hell yeah, dude. On Thursday night, U.S. time, and early Friday morning in Iraq, General Qasem Soleimani, a high-profile Iranian general, is killed by a U.S. airstrike at Baghdad International Airport. Soleimani led the Quds Force under Iran's Revolutionary Guard, which is widely believed to support terrorist groups such as Hezbollah. One nigga run to the front door. I hop out, I start shooting. Bow, 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 bow. Shot the nigga. Bow, shot his ass. Bow, bow. Happy New Year. It is 2020. Can you believe that? You're the best audience I've had all year. I had to think about it, but when I thought about it, you are. <laughs> With the new year, New York's bail reform law takes effect. Supporters say the old system unfairly targeted the poor. Critics say it'll put criminals back on the streets. So Mr. News, Ali Bauman is here with more on that. Ali. Well, the proponents argue this will close the disparity between people who can afford to pay bail and those who cannot, while also dramatically lowering the number of people incarcerated. But the key controversy is that in many cases, judges will not have discretion to hold suspects in custody, even if there's evidence the person is a danger to the victim or the public. Another candidate out. I'm so proud of the campaign we've run together. We've shaped the conversation on so many important issues in this race. I've determined that it simply isn't our time. You from the media, tell the Prime Minister to go and get from Nelligan. We really enjoy doing this head. Thank you very much. You'll, you'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. devastated with a 6.4 magnitude earthquake last week, but it has seen a series of aftershocks in the last few days. There has been extensive damages to some homes in the southwestern part of the island. Breaking news as we come on the air tonight. Iran has launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles at two locations in Iraq where U.S. troops are based. The Pentagon says the missiles were fired from Iranian territory in retaliation for the U.S. drone strike in Baghdad last week that killed Iran's top general. Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself, just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. You had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you?
Good morning. I'm pleased to inform you the American people should be extremely grateful and happy. No Americans were harmed in last night's attack by the Iranian regime. Now, the Pentagon is saying that 50 U.S. troops in Iraq have been diagnosed with traumatic brain injuries after the Iranian missile strikes earlier this month. We begin tonight with the growing certainty from U.S. intelligence that it was an Iranian missile that brought down that passenger jet that crashed outside Tehran, allowed to take off just hours after Iran launched those missiles targeting the U.S. military. And tonight here, this new video posted by a resident in a Tehran neighborhood showing the plane on fire and then crashing. This CCTV video airing on Iranian media showing the moment of impact at the crash site. The devastation where the passenger jet came down just minutes after takeoff, the wreckage strewn across so many acres. All 176 people on board died, 63 of them Canadians. Well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? It's astonishing. It's momentous. It has no precedent in modern times. The golden couple have decided they're quitting. Why are they leaving? I think it was pretty obvious if you hung around with them as I did and followed them when they did their tours and their trips. There were great chunks of the job they simply didn't like. I lived in the back of a Walgreens for three years because my, because my arm was stuck in the blood pressure machine. <laughs> That's where I found him. I took him home, hosed him off in his yard, and nursed him back to health with muscle milk. Soon I weighed 600 pounds. It was a long, hard road to lose all that weight, and I couldn't have done it without a good friend. <laughs> but after his friend escaped, I stepped in. Taiwan's incumbent president swept to a landslide victory in the country's election this weekend. Tsai Ing-wen won with a record-breaking number of votes. According to the country's election commission, eight million ballots were cast in her favor. That's the most ever since the island began holding direct presidential elections in 1996. Tsai defeated a pro-Beijing rival. She firmly rejects China's one country, two systems model. We see the uh, the impeachment managers now who are going to make that uh, that walk to the Senate side and formally deliver the articles of impeachment. It is a moment of solemnity, solemnity in a uh, process that has been filled with with rancor. Good morning, everyone. This is a very important day for us. And as you know, I reference temporal markers that our founders and our poets and others have used over time uh, to place us in time, to emphasize the importance of time, because everything is about time. 
Yeah, and speaking of timing, it feels like Pelosi's edibles just kicked in at the wrong moment there. <laughs> what was that? All of us are just clocks telling time. <laughs> we all have hands and faces and little tiny batteries. I'm suspending my campaign for president with the same spirit with which it began. Senator Warren confirmed in a statement that in 2018, you told her that you did not believe that a woman could win the election. Why did you say that? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't say it. <laughs> I think you called me a liar on national TV. What? I think you called me a liar on national you know, TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion? We'll have that Anytime. discussion. You called me. You told me. All right, let's not do it I'm now. Not, I don't want to get in the middle, but I just want to say hi, Bernie. Yeah, good. Okay. A deadly virus appears to be spreading quickly in China, prompting officials in the U.S. to take protective steps to prevent an outbreak here. The CDC and Homeland Security's Customs and Border Protection began screening for the coronavirus Friday. They're being implemented at three U.S. airports, San Francisco, New York, and Los Angeles. We have new details on the impeachment trial. The Senate trial is likely to start next Tuesday, January 21st. Two Republican senators tell CBS News that Majority Leader McConnell is telling his conference the impeachment trial will start next week and could last three to five weeks. When he shaves that off, but the way he looks at you. Yes, those piercing <laughs> eyes. Right. Those crazy piercing And, and eyes. he's got that good nose. It dips way down. <laughs> like he's happy with it. So, so am I. And when he shaves off his mustache, he's got a hairline yep. fracture. He's got one of those, um, what do you call it? Cleft lip. Yep. Cleft palate. Yep. He's, he's got yep. this. Yep. He's got this. Uh -huh. No, I find it to be, I find it to be very attractive. <laughs> Google's parent company Alphabet has become the latest company to hit a market cap of $1 trillion following tech rivals Apple, Microsoft and Amazon. The U.S. and China have signed a partial trade deal aimed at easing the 18-month trade conflict between the world's two biggest economies. That guy looks like a drumstick. You hungry? Oh, it does. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Some ominous developments out of China on a new illness. Officials there have just confirmed the first human-to-human -human transmission of coronavirus. It's a huge story. The number of people infected with the new virus tripled over the weekend. We only compete once for two minutes and 15 seconds in Daytona. That it may be your last time in your career. You are a freaking Navarro cheerleader. It's definitely a privilege. In a new documentary about her life, Clinton says in Congress, nobody likes Sanders. She dismisses him as a career politician and adds, it's all just baloney, and I feel so bad that people got sucked into it. Clinton told The Hollywood Reporter that Sanders created a culture where his staff and supporters attack his competitors, particularly the women. Because that world, in case you haven't noticed, is currently on fire. No. How, 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 old, how old is she? She's uh, about 17 now. Oh, yes. That's good. But what is your response to she her? She beat me out on Time Magazine. What? When we're done, we believe that we will have made the case overwhelmingly of the president's guilt. Name Adam Bennett Schiff, age 59, spirit animal this. According to the Financial Times, the hack's roots trace back to Bezos and bin Salman exchanging phone numbers in Los Angeles. Weeks later, says Britain's The Guardian paper, Bezos and the crown prince were engaged in a seemingly friendly WhatsApp exchange when bin Salman sent an unsolicited malware-infected file. It's unclear what information was then taken. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. A Washington state resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began. Officials now say more than 400 people have been sickened and nine people have died. You, so to be clear, you don't want a candle that smells like Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. <laughs> what does it say about America that, they, that the candle is now sold out? I think it's not America. I think it's a lot of guys who are horny. From flames to flash floods, 
Just a week ago, staff at this nature park were protecting their animals from oncoming bushfires. Now they're having to deal with another extreme. There's the drain. It was also said absolutely inadequate. Have a go at it. Look at what's coming in the park, a wall of water. Staff rushed koalas to safety. We'll be back, mate. We'll get back. While for creatures more used to the wet, it was more about keeping them in their place. The 1960s was a time of radical social upheaval, but when Monty Python's Flying Circus first aired in 1969, it was like nothing else before it. The competition in the comedy troupe was fierce, but Terry Jones came up with some of the funniest sketches, influencing language and culture. Egg, bacon and spam! Egg, bacon, sausage and spam! It's like one of those moments when you just sort of write something and, uh, you know, is this funny? Terry Jones was born in Wales in 1942, but grew up in England. He first teamed up with fellow student Michael Palin at Oxford University. The pair came up with many Python classics. Charlie, you come to this mark there. The troupe then embarked on a series of films, and Terry Jones got a chance to direct as well as act. He was soon in the firing line as religious conservatives took offence at Life of Brian. Oh, my foot! Oh, shh! Oh, damn, damn, damn! Life of Brian isn't, um, isn't blasphemous because it doesn't touch on belief at all. It's heretical because it touches on dogma. Jones and Palin were also behind the Ripping Yarn series. But in recent years, dementia took its toll on a brilliant mind. Curtain down. Uh. Despite the on-screen madness, his comedy was grounded in ordinary life. And that's what his closest collaborator will miss the most. <laughs> oh, I shall miss the sociable day, you know. I, I... <laughs> this is where it all began. Authorities believe the outbreak of the coronavirus can be traced back to a seafood market in Wuhan. Its shutters have now come down, and the city has followed suit. A self Thursday morning, the city has been cut off from the rest of the country. Trains, flights, buses, and ferries have been cancelled. Even public transport within Wuhan has ground to a halt. Been final day for House Democrats to make their case to the Senate. Democratic prosecutors argue today that President Trump, quote, betrayed the country. But the president's defense team is ready to fire right back at those accusations, and that's going down this weekend. If I may, what I was going to suggest was at 6.30, we take a 30-minute break for dinner. Okay. If that yes. would work. Americans should know that this is a potentially very serious public health threat. But at this point, Americans should not worry for their own safety. Prince Andrew, seen with his mother, the Queen, smiling just days ago. At the time, the image seen as a sign of support from Buckingham Palace. But it's his relationship with a then 17-year-old American woman, photographed standing next to him in 2001. And his friendship with sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, pictured with the prince after leaving prison in 2010, that has U.S. authorities wanting to speak to him as part of an investigation into allegations of sex trafficking. Across China tonight, an expanding lockdown to contain an epidemic. Travel bans in over a dozen cities, affecting 35 million people. And a race to cope. Construction on a 1,000-bed hospital to be finished in less than a week. The mysterious virus now reaching Europe, with confirmed cases in France and nine other countries. With over 900 infections, 41 people have died, including an otherwise healthy 36-year-old man, raising fears of who is vulnerable. 
Good afternoon from New York. We're coming on the air with breaking news, very sad news to tell the sports world. The L.A. Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The chopper reportedly went down just before 10 a.m. local time, according to fire, uh, the fire department out there in Calabasas, California. That's northwest of Los Angeles. You can see the picture there. It burst into flames on impact, starting a nearby brush fire. The 41-year-old Kobe Bryant was reportedly traveling with four others in that aircraft, in that helicopter. The L.A. County Fire Department saying all five people perished in the crash. At the The U.S. government is calling the coronavirus outbreak a public health emergency. On Friday, a seventh case of the virus was confirmed in the United States. At least 191 other people are being monitored for the disease. In order to limit the spread, anyone traveling to the U.S. from China's Hubei province where the disease originated will face a mandatory 14-day quarantine starting Sunday. That's tomorrow. Nearly 200 U.S. citizens evacuated from China are being held at a military base in Southern California. But health officials say the risk of infection is low. Meanwhile, China has denounced measures by the U.S. and other countries denying entry to Chinese citizens because of the coronavirus. Now, it says these nations are acting against World Health Organization recommendations. <laughs> A Chinese influencer has publicly apologized after a video showing her eating bat soup has resurfaced on the internet. For those that don't know, both snakes and bats have been linked to the spread of the new coronavirus. And it's videos like these that could encourage people to keep eating them. And for more analysis of day eight of this Senate impeachment trial, I'm joined by Victoria Norse. She was special counsel to the Senate Judiciary Committee in the early 19... Monotonous, dull, boring. New York City officials are reminding the public that it is safe to head to Chinatown. The commissioner of small business services dined at a restaurant on Mott Street tonight. Businesses in Chinatown have reported a slump in sales over the past few weeks as coronavirus has remained in the headlines. Donald Trump has unveiled his Middle East peace plan. He's calling it the deal of the century. Many Palestinians have a few other phrases for it. They weren't consulted. The plan offers a two-state solution of a kind, and the president began with one of Israel's top priorities. Under this vision, Jerusalem will remain Israel's undivided, very important, undivided capital. Is it that you come to these pig vigils for those who may not know that you've come here regularly? What's the... Because you have to. Because you have to. Um, I think that we... Um, I think most people don't really know uh, the torture and murder that is the meat and dairy industry. Now, I know it's been all but inevitable, but for the first time I can say to you that Brexit is definitely happening. That's because the European Parliament has voted to approve the EU and the UK's withdrawal deal. The vote was 621 to 49, so not at all close. The UK will now definitely leave the European Union at 11 p.m. UK time on Friday. That's midnight in Brussels. As soon as the result was announced, many members of the European Parliament broke into song. So an unlikely rendition of Old Lang Syne. That's a Scottish folk song, for those of you who don't know it, but those, most of you will. And, of course, it recalls happy days gone by. Now, for a lot of those people singing, the happy days in terms of the UK's relationship with the EU are in the past. Today is not a day that they're celebrating. The same definitely can't be true, said, for the Brexit Party leader, Nigel Farage. I know you're going to miss us. I know you want to ban our national flags, but we're going to wave you goodbye. And we'll look forward in the future to working with you as sovereign. 
If you disobey the rules, you get cut off. Could we please remove the flags?